Hello everyone, it's your fairy godmother Mint, and welcome back to the Mint Come In. Today we're having a lovely relaxing day, you know, in the semi-sun, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to do a video about using other candles that are not specifically spell candles for magic, or using pre-made spell candles as well. Some people ask me when they buy my candles, how to use them once they receive them. So I thought I'd go over that in this video, as well as using other candles that have nothing to do with magic at all, say scented candles from Bath & Body Works, I said that really weird, Bath & Body Works, or another company that you just happen to see and like the way it looks and like the way it smells and like the color that it is, and you want to try to use it for magic. So we're gonna go over some of those things in this video today. Hope everyone had a wonderful week last week. I know that some people had some time off from school. You all had the week off, it was nice to not have to worry about, um, you know, logging in on time. Like when we, when Gil does school, he has to log in like several different things because he has like regular kindergarten and then he has like uh, occupational therapy and then he has to like log into like, a separate thing for like a separate school fit. It's just a lot. So it was nice to have a break from that. So I hope everyone enjoyed their break and let's go ahead and get into the video. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, I did post a bunch of videos on my IGTV about items that I've gotten from small businesses that I've loved and I did get some wonderful candles from Wicked Wicks. I'm going to put like a little picture here on the side because everything's gonna be mirrored but these candles smell so incredibly good like so good my, I can't even decide which one is my favorite because they all smell so great um, I've been burning the meditative state candle and the other one that smells like delicious fruit upstairs in my bedroom this one is such a nice candle just like BT dubs I recommend this one especially for anyone like me who is extremely sensitive to smell I have chronic migraines and when something is too strong for me it just gives me a migraine like it doesn't it doesn't like start to give me a migraine or it starts to bother me I will just have a migraine so when it comes to candle scents even though I love scented candles I can't handle all the smells because they will give me a migraine this one is so nice it smells like nag champa first of all it is a strong smelling candle but not strong so where to where it's like stinging your nose or where it's like giving you that like harsh candle smell you know what i mean like that harsh perfume smell it's so gentle it's kind of like um it's, it smells like a warm blanket when you take it out of the dryer that smell you know that smell and that feeling that's what this gives me definitely recommend this one to anyone who is sensitive to smells it smells really nice and it goes throughout the entire home without knocking me in the head so i'm going to be using one of my wicked books candles in this video and to talk a little bit about using candles that are not made for magic specifically for magic for you so the first thing that you want to take note of if you're say let's just go ahead and say bath and body works again because i can't think of other places that sell candles <laughs> I mean, there are so many, but that's all I can think of. So say you're at Bath and Body Works and you find like um, a warm vanilla sugar candle. Is that a thing? I don't know. Say you find a candle that's called warm vanilla sugar and it's like a light cream color or maybe it's like a nice brown color and you like the way it looks and the way it smells and you want to use it for magic. You totally can. You can totally use any candle for magic, any candle out there. Some people will tell you differently. Some people will say, um, no, only use like plain candles, unscented candles, and then add stuff in, or only use candles that are made specifically for magic. However, I feel like you can use any candle you want as long as you're using it for a specific thing based on what the candle looks like and smells like. For example, with my warm vanilla sugar mishmash, I was saying, this is a white color candle. You can use it for almost any intention. White is a color that you can use for any intention at all. It's a blank slate, so you can add your intention into it. Boom, you got it. White is also great for cleansing. You can use a white candle for cleansing. And what makes it even better for cleansing is if it's made with something that is good for cleansing. Any kind of tree scent is great for cleansing. And if it's made with fragrance oils and you aren't sure where the oils have come from and you're not sure how ethically sourced they were and that bothers you, then don't use it. It's all about how you feel about the item that you have and whether or not you feel like you can consciously use it or not have any doubt. If you are approaching this candle saying, I wonder if I can use this for my so-and-so, mm, and you make that mm, face, don't use it. You already told yourself no. If you say, ooh, I think I can use this for my so-and-so, 
yeah, then that yeah face is telling is your intuition saying, yeah, you can. So go ahead. Remember to just test out how you're feeling before you make a yes or no decision about anything. Because if it's something that seems odd, it seems off, it seems like out of the blue, whack, whatever, but you think you can use it for something, then go ahead and use it. Your intuition is going to tell you yes or no. Go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror when you're saying you're gonna do it. Look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I'm going to use this candle for love. And your face is like, then you're not gonna use it for love. You know what I mean? Just trust yourself. You know what you can do. It's your magic, it's coming from you, so only you can tell yourself yes or no. So my first tip is to always check and see what the ingredients of the candle are, and to check and see what the scents of the candle are and what those scents are good for. So like with this Wicked Wix candle, it's a lovely green color, and as we know, green is great for money, prosperity, growth, it's great for the heart chakra, it's great for growing your love for yourself, love for anybody else, it's great for anything that has to do with blossoming, blooming, planting seeds, all of those things that go wonderfully with green. And it is made with gardenia, mint, and amber. And gardenia is great for a lot of those things as well, for prosperity, growth. It's also wonderful for love, especially long-lasting love. Mint, we all know, is also wonderful for cleansing. It's also a great prosperity herb. I love using mint, obviously, for prosperity. It's wonderful and it smells so great and it's abundant. Mint grows in abundance. I have a mint plant outside. There's a little baby plant. Now it's like doing whatever it wants to do because it is a prosperous plant. It will grow all over the place. It's great for money. Amber is one of my absolutely, absolutely, bleh. Amber is one of my favorite resins to use. Amber resin smells incredible when it burns and it's also a wonderful booster of any energy that you're working with. So adding amber to something is going to give it a nice boost and it's also going to add harmony to all of your ingredients. Amber is a wonderful harmonizing energy. So with those three things in this candle, what have we got? Growth energy from Gardenia, from the mint, we've got prosperity and growth already. And then with our amber, we've got harmony. So we've got a prosperous harmony candle right here. So check all of your ingredients, see what the candle scents are, see what the little components are, and if those things work toward your goal, then you got it. If you just like the candle and it smells really good, get it anyway, and later on down the line, it might be the perfect candle for a working that you're doing. You have no idea yet, you know? So you can go ahead and write your intentions right on the glass. If you have a Sharpie or a marker, you can write your intention right on the glass, write it on the lid if you want, write it on the bottom of the candle, or write it on some parchment paper or just some like special nice paper that you have that you're going to write your intention on. If you say you bought a spell candle for me and you're like, okay, now what do I do? I always put an affirmation card in all the candles that I send to people so you can write whatever it is that you want to happen on that card and place that card under your candle. Now with this sort of thing, you don't have to dress this candle. It already has the ingredients in there, but if you want to add a little, oh, it smells so good. If you want to add some herbs to it, you absolutely can. This candle is a dress candle that I have made. This is made specifically for love. We have our Wicked Wigs candle here as well. Now, like I said, you can add more to this candle if you want to. You don't have to, absolutely not. But if you would like to, you can totally dress a candle that you found at the mall or something, and that's no big deal. Here, I just have a lovely little blend of rose petals and cornflowers that I got from Lilac and Lavender. I will put the link for their company in the description as well as Wicked Wicks. They're both great companies, both great people. I love them. This is not sponsored or anything like that. I just, I love them. <laughs> and I'm going to just add a little bit of this to my candle. I'm going to be adding it in, sprinkling it in clockwise. Now, usually while you're doing this, you will be thinking of your intention, visualizing what you want, and just kind of holding your ritual uh, your ritual's purpose in your mind while you're doing this. Now, after you write down your intention and everything like that, you stick it under your candle or in your candle, wherever around your altar space. Or another thing that you can do, which I think is really useful, if this is a longer ritual, you can put it on your mirror. So that when you get up in the morning, you can look at yourself in the mirror and look at that intention and read it aloud. I'm also going to add some peppermint to this candle. And since this candle is gonna be working for my household as a harmonious group, I'm going to be putting something from myself and something from my husband and something from Yule into the candle together. Whether that be some of our hair or, you know, like um, 
just like something that we wrote on or like a little piece of paper with our initials on it or something like that i will put it in the candle small enough so that it can burn off and be okay and nothing big that's going to like set up fire in my home you know what i mean so something that is optional of course but i do recommend doing it just so that the candle is more in tune with your specific energy and not the energy of someone that's still at the shop another thing that you can do which i do recommend is to cleanse the outside of the candle before you bring it home or before you put it on your altar so if you got a candle from like rite aid you would take it home and give it a nice little wipe down um with some antibacterial cloths because it's COVID out here and um, go ahead and just take some cleansing herbs or a spray or some kind of cleansing smoke and just run it around the candle before you place it on your sacred space. And then after you do that, after you've placed something yourself in there, you've like, written your intentions, you've got everything set up to go, then you can go ahead and light your candle and continue setting your intentions. This is something that you would do for any candle that you're working with, whether it's a pre-dressed candle, a candle you've dressed yourself, a candle that you've made yourself, anything. That That is something that you can do just to raise the vibration and to bring the energy of what you're actually working on into your space. Now, another thing that people ask me a lot is if you can put the candle out and like start again tomorrow and I say yes to that. If you are someone that can leave a candle lit all night in a safe place like in your bathtub or somewhere where nothing's gonna mess with it, good. If you are someone that has children and animals like me, I put candles out. If they're a big enough candle that it'll light or um, last for a couple of days, I put the candle out. I thank the flame. I don't blow it out. I usually put it out with the lid on top of the candle or I'll wave it out with my um, owl wing. And I thank the flame for, you know, being a part of my ritual. I put the candle out, I leave my intention with it, and then the next day when I go to relight it, I say my intention again, I lit the candle again, I thank the flame for, uh, for its contribution to my working, I state my intentions, and then we go from there. So it's okay to put a candle out, it's okay to have a candle from Bath & Body Works, it's okay to have a candle from Rite Aid, it's totally okay as long as you feel like this is something that's working for you then go for it so what happened to my hair oh my braid just came out while i was down there <laughs> okay well just, just remove yourself braid since you're being silly if you have only ever used candles that you found from like bath and body works or something like that if you've only ever used pre-made candles that are not specific for magic and nothing has been working for you then i would suggest trying a different candle um maybe from a candle seller that makes candles specifically for magic like intention candles or try getting a plain blank candle and dressing it and arranging it yourself it is always good to switch things up if you feel like something isn't working for you or that specific type of candle doesn't work for you then switch it up try something else don't keep trying the same thing over and over again expecting a different result go ahead and change the intention and if you've been working with the candle for a while already and you don't feel like the energy of that candle is working for you go ahead and switch that candle off for something else um, it's okay to stop a ritual if you don't feel the energy is correct and to start again or to take some time away from it and start again as long as you reinstate your intention you re re-raise the energy does that make sense um yeah i don't know bring the energy back up to the highest peak that it can be in and start again it's okay remember that it's called practicing magic for a reason you're not ever mastering anything you're always continuing to practice and get better at things and to learn how things work for you what works well for your energy and writing that down in your book of shadows because that's why you have your book of shadows so that you can write down the results and write down the ingredients and write down how you've done things whether it has worked or not for you how you plan to change it the next time and whether that works or not for you okay does that make sense if anyone has any other questions about this and you want to put it in the comment section for me to answer further please go ahead because sometimes i feel like i've said something or maybe i haven't said something and i forget so go ahead and ask more questions in the comment section thank you all for being here today the link for wicked wicks and for lilac and lavender will be in the description box i hope you all are having a beautiful wonderful day snuggle your animals did you see willie down here snuggle your animals Call your mom and tell her you love her. Call your friends and ooh, <laughs> call your friends and make sure everyone's doing okay this week. The holiday season can be rough for some people. 
and sometimes they get a little bit of extra love especially since sometimes some of us are just alone during the holidays because we're in a freaking pandemic i've been trying to go live more often just to talk to people and you know just be there and and hang out for people who are literally um in lockdown quarantined by themselves because that is the worst thing ever and i wish that i could just get everybody kitties and puppies so that they weren't alone but i can't so i'll be going live more often on instagram just to be there for you guys so after all of that have a beautiful magical wonderful day oh one more thing before i go i just remember this question that i get so much sorry i keep adjusting this um when you're disposing of magic candles this is a question that i get so much and i always forget to answer it you are disposing of anything that's left if you cannot bury it it is okay if you're always like i can't bury it anywhere i don't have any room to bury it what should i do with it if it's in glass and if it's in a good intention something like love prosperity whatever recycle it let that be made into something else that energy is being recycled made into something beautiful if it is just like a tiny little lump of wax that you have left then go ahead and bury that if you can't bury it at your home or around your home in your yard or something like that or you can't bury it the prosperity lump of candle and you can't bury it at the bank Bury it somewhere that's sacred to you, somewhere that's special to you. Maybe your favorite like playground that where you grew up or just like a favorite place that you liked hanging out when you were a kid. Somewhere that has a good memory for you. If it's something bad, if it's something that you want to get rid of and you are, you know, like banishing your ex or something like that, then destroy it. Put it in the garbage, throw it away, let that energy know that you are done with it. It is gone. You don't have any love for it anymore. Peace out. Goodbye it's gone you know what I mean so just depending on what the intention was for try to treat it as well as possible and that's about it okay now have a beautiful day everybody goodbye